Well, the top priority for Iron Bark Cider Works, everybody in the city of Claremont, is to give the LGBTQ plus community a safe space to express themselves without judgment or harassment. Our Sarah Pila joins us this morning to tell us more about the small business wow. and its inclusive rules. Hey, I like this I top. I like the glitter. It's she's, all about pride. She's giving it to us this glitter morning. Glitter is lovely. Celebrating hey, the community. <laughs> Celebrating the community, all about pride, but I have to say, when you're at Ironbark Cider Works, it's almost like every day is pride. So I want to tell you about this woman-owned small business. It's a two-prong approach. First of all, it's all about creating health-conscious cider, so allergen-free, gluten-free, sugar-free, sulfite-free, preservative-free, all the frees, guys. And then the second prong is that this is an inclusive, safe space for everyone, including the LGBTQ plus community. You see their cider house rules right Right here it says Iron Bark is a safe, inclusive space. You're not to touch anyone without their permission. You're not to say or do anything that is racist, sexist, homophobic, transphobic. You get it. Any of that derogatory behavior, you will be kicked out of this cider house. And we want to keep the cider flowing here, right? So take a look at this business. This cider going through this filtering stage is allergen free and contains no added sugar. It's a process that Ironbark Cider Works owner and CEO Kat Fleming says ensures they're living up to the first part of their mission. One is that we want to make really clean cider, cider that is doesn't affect you in any way, like allergically or anything. Kat is from Australia, but grew up around Claremont and began making cider because she couldn't find alcohol she could drink. She's allergic to sulfites and gluten and doesn't like consuming a lot of sugar. But after discovering dry cider on a trip to England, she came back to the States inspired. I decided to make it on my own. So I taught myself how to make cider um, and one thing led to another and here we are. <laughs> so creating cider her way, she opened the Cider House in 2017. The business has also become a family affair with Kat's daughter Becky joining the ranks during the pandemic. They had really no help when COVID started and they really needed to get production up. While making clean dry cider is one prong of the business, the second is making Iron Bark a safe space for everyone, including the LGBTQ plus community. Kat calls themselves aggressively inclusive, protecting everyone's rights to be who they are. You will not be judged. You will not ever have anyone making a comment. You won't have just look at our cider house rules and you can't miss the rules listed at the bar stating they're inclusive not to touch anyone without their permission and not to say or do anything considered derogatory behavior. I want to protect people's rights to actually be accept an accepted part of this community. So this was Kat's vision, creating a safe, inclusive space for people to hang out and drink health conscious cider. And her motivation makes her daughter proud. That's how my mom is. When she wants something done, she gets it done. Well, Iron Bark missed out on Pride last year. This year, they're hosting events throughout all of June. But every Sunday, those who identify get 20% off their entire bill. It's another way Kat gives back to her Iron Bark family. We want everyone to just be people in this space. Filling up every vessel with love and cider. And so here, Kat is here pouring a, a cider this morning, Lestat. You have all sorts Ooh, of different types of ciders here when you come to Iron Bark. Uh, what is in this, Kat? Yeah. That's, uh, what's this like the, what makes it red? This is blood orange cranberry. It blood is blood orange cranberry, orange cranberry mm. you guys. So you can literally get, you know, anything you want here. The blood orange cranberry matches the pink bar, as you can see. It's all about <laughs> fun and color and just everybody getting along with Hold one another Hold up, Sarah. Here. You said blood orange cranberry cider. I'm getting my my car right now. I'm heading right over to you, my friend. What's up? Okay, we need a taste test. Come on, there you got to go. give us a taste, a taste test. Yeah, tell us how it tastes. All right, I'm going to give you a little taste. Yeah, come on. The people want to know. Oh, is you it guys. Delicious? Oh, really? I'm telling you, this is the real deal. It is dry, uh, but it still gets that crisp, refreshing taste. This is the type of cider you want to drink. Do you I'm really telling taste? You, right? Do you really? Uh, I, how present are like the is the is the cranberry and the blood orange flavor the, the, the notes? Is it really there? My my tongue, my mouth, it is awakened right now with all of the flavors. Uh, it, it's going to be a beautiful weekend, right? I mean, we're going to need some nice cider to refresh us. I think we're us. seeing your poetic palette yeah, we are. out here. Because, you know, sometimes they put all that fancy stuff, they talk about it, but the drink is not, they, they're not, but they don't be yeah, about it. Cider. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. We say put on what's not on, and offer guys, what's not being offered. Yeah. Go ahead. 
what I love about this too is, you know, I'm gluten free, so yes. I can't drink beer. There's a lot yeah. of stuff I can't drink. A lot of ciders are sweet. This is the type of stuff. So I, I fell in love when I came here, not only because of the cider, obviously, but of course of the message too. It's kind of the best of both worlds. I'm telling you, you can drink it up and live your dream and best life. Absolutely. That's how we do it. And cider, it's such a new and novel thing. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Thing. This is fabulous. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Nice going. <laughs>